All right, so let's dive right into the notes on inscribed angles today. So two radii on this circle, called SC and CT. Remember, a radius is something that goes from the center to one of the endpoints on the circumference. Okay, um, an arc. How about ST? That is the example of a minor arc. A minor arc is less than 180, so it goes less than halfway around the circle. A major arc example could be um, how about SRT. A major arc always has one, two, three letters. Okay, diameter is something that goes all the way across the circle through the center. So it's really just a very special type of chord. Um, remember, a chord is just any slice through the circle, like ST, um, but a slice right through the middle is called a diameter, and that's RT. Uh, AB is a tangent. It is It hits the circle at one spot, and it hits at a 90 degree angle, we learned in 12.1. Um, a central angle example, how about ACB? A central angle is one that's in the center of the circle, and a point of tangency would be B. Okay, so the key thing from the notes today is what is an inscribed angle and what do we need to know about it? So an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex, which is like the corner of the angle, lies on the circumference of a circle. So IE angle ABC is an example. Okay, so what does the inscribed angle theorem state? This is the big takeaway from today would be what is this theorem and how do we use it? Um, basically, the, all the formula says is the measure of that arc, I'm sorry, the measure of that central angle that we mentioned is equal to one half the measure of the arc that it intercepts. So this inscribed angle is put into the circle and it does cut the circle into two parts. One of them is the intercepted arc and the other is the leftover arc um, beneath it. Okay, so this is AC, and this is the measure of that angle. So the angle is half of the arc. So I always remember that the arc is double the angle. That helps me remember for some reason that the arc is bigger, and then I don't get them mixed up because it's really easy to flip those in those formulas. Okay, so let's work through some examples. So this is just a very basic example. The arc is 116. So we can just use the formula. Now, careful, this is only for inscribed angles, so we can't just use this for anything. So the angle's A, and the arc is 116, and that's 58. Okay, so this one's got three inscribed angles, angle A, B, and C. And we are interested in this length first. So the measure of the angle A is one half the measure of the arc that is intercepted by it. Okay. But we know this is 48. So the arc, it's, it's measure. I should put an M for measure in here. The measure of the arc is going to be 96. Okay? And if we're interested in finding out angle B, we would be wanting this angle, which you always want to extend these lines and look to see what arc corresponds with it. And it turns out that the measure of angle B is going to equal one half of that arc, 110, which is just 55. Okay? All right, we're moving now. So let's keep going. So 
angle two is actually opening up to the same arc as 28, I'm oh, sorry, 38. You can see this arc here, it cuts the circle along the green, but so does this one. So we know that the arc is double, so this should be 76, but we know that two, the angle two is gonna be half, so it's 38. So basically, the measure of angle two matches the other angle, and that's because they intercept the same arc. Right, there's this relationship. So if the arcs are the same for two inscribed angles, those angles are gonna be the same too. All right, so that's like a mini little corollary theorem we have. Um, here's one that's a little bit more challenging, but it's not too bad. Arc A is right here, or the arc with length A is right there, and it's opening up to this angle, right? This angle here would cut the circle right at those arcs. Okay, so we could set up a formula, right? The angle is half of the arc. So that means that A must be 120. Okay, so I'm gonna put 120 here. Okay, let's scratch our diagram and look at B. So B is this angle. And I'm drawing it up like over here, like a little past, so I really see where that arc uh, stops. So to me, it looks like angle B is opening up to an arc that's 150 degrees. So our formula says take half the arc, that's the angle. So B ought to be 75. Okay. Something very special is happening here. We have a 90 degree angle And since we know angle is half of the arc, this semicircle here, in fact, every semicircle is 180 degrees. And because that is half of the circle, I know that this half is 180 degrees as well. Why is that important? Well, the angle with measure P corresponds with this arc. So P must be half the size of its intercepted arc. So P is 90. And rather than playing super hard on this, we could actually see that all of these interior angles in here they all add up to 360 because it's a quadrilateral. It's a four-sided figure. It has 360 degrees. We know that because every quadrilateral can be made up of two triangles that add to 180 each. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug everything into here. Okay this a little bit differently in the notes. I think this way's a little bit um, quicker. And there's other quicker ways to do this too, by the way, but I'll leave it here. Okay, so that's a, two important things from this one is that all the way around the circle is 360. Um, and when you have a right angle, that's an inscribed angle, like we do right here, this uh, opens up to 180 degrees because it's double 90 degree, right? That's what the theorem said. Um, and there's also a diameter there that you could draw in. So very important right angle uh, facts we have there. 
All right. And then this one. So this one's definitely a challenge. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, but it is, it's very doable. Uh, I'm going to show you the way that I did it, but there's certainly other ways. Um, I saw that there were three uh, inscribed angles. So I'm going to write an equation for all of those. And it's going to be one half of an arc. And I want to see which equation I like the best. And then maybe I'll use that, and then maybe that could um, get me going. So 68, we're going to need to call this something. How about x? 68, its arc is c plus x. And 71 comes here and here, and its arc is 104 plus c. And finally, for A, it hits here, and its arc is 104 plus B. So out of all of those um, equations, I'm going to use this one first. So I'll put a little 1 next to here. Why do I choose that one? Because I can solve for C. There's only one variable. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2. And pretty quickly, I can see that C is 38 degrees. Cool. Now I know C, so the first equation doesn't look as intimidating. So I want to choose that one next. Because I know that I can just replace C with 38. And now I can solve, even though I'm not asked about it, I can solve for X. This would be 136. So X equals 98 and C is 38. Um, I still don't have A or B, so maybe I should look at my picture again and see if I could use another uh, fact uh, other than the inscribed angle. So now I'm looking kind of outside that those four sides, and I'm looking at the circle. One thing that's definitely true is B plus 104 plus 38 plus 98 better be 360. All right, so this would be equal to, let's see, 202, 240. So using this way, a fourth equation, I get B is 120. And once I have B, the last equation is looking really good because I can plug in what B is. So de definitely a lot of work. Um, again, there are other ways to do it. One of them I'll show you. Oops, let's actually find the answer there. There's actually a theorem that says that if you add opposite angles in a quadrilateral together, you get 180. So we could have found out that A was 112 right from the beginning which probably would have saved us some time. Okay, so we'll, we'll touch on that theorem again um, when we do the next section. I'll put that in the warm-up. It's a nice, nice, nice thing to know. It's, it's just useful. And for these, um, they're actually called something special. They're called cyclic quadrilaterals, meaning that it's a four-sided figure in a circle, cyclic meaning circle. So anyhow, that's how I did that one but that one's definitely a challenge. Um, I'm not going to work through the proof in the video. I, you don't need to know how to do this, but just know that you can write down equations, manipulate them, and show this, that the measure of angle C is one half the measure of 
C, D, B as an arc. So this is a little different, right? It's, it's not the measure between two chords, like normal. It's actually a chord and a tangent. Um, but it still kind of looks like an inscribed angle, and the formula happens to be the same. So we're kind of going to treat it like an inscribed angle um, just for this. Um, so if you want to see what this means, this is just saying that if this is the arc and this is angle 1, let's say, the measure of angle 1 is half of the arc. So it behaves like an inscribed angle for this. So um, we'll use that. Now there's there's a way to prove this and if you played with these equations enough where you're really interested in solving for angle one and this you have enough and you have enough equations there to solve so you have an equation relating angle one and arc CBD okay so Play with that if you'd like, but we're just going to do the examples here. So this will help cement it the most, I think. Um, they're telling us that this major arc is 212, and they're interested about this angle. Okay. But we just learned that when you have a tangent and a chord like that, this blue angle... is equal to one half of the arc that is intercepted by that chord. Okay. Uh, which makes this angle just plain 106. And that's all I have to say, right? Um, some other facts that you might need to know about this figure would be that this arc has 148 degrees because the green arc and this gray arc need to add to equal 360. And this red angle right here, this orange one, the blue and the orange, they gotta add to 180. They're supplementary. So some key facts you might need to use. Um, and this one also is a challenge. Um, one thing we know right away, if you've been paying attention, is that this is a diameter, and this angle here has to be right. Because, because it's a diameter, it cuts the circle in two. And because 180 is half 360, that angle um, is opening up to a 180 degree angle, so the angle has to be half of that, which is 90, okay? With that knowledge, you can find out what Y is, because that triangle's got to add up to 180. Okay. Um, now, now we have the theorem we just did. X needs to be one half of the measure of arc JL because that blue arc is the same arc in question in this theorem, the red one. See how that's taking the place here? It's between a tangent and a chord. Um, but that is the arc in question, and the question is what is the measure? This is arc JL. If we had that measure, we would know what x is. So, but we have this nice 35 degrees over here. And this angle happens to intercept arc JL. So I know that 35 is one half the measure of JL. So the measure of JL should be double 35. So if this is 70, this goes in here and it turns out that x is 35. So definitely harder to see, especially because the diagram sits crammed uh, in there and there's a lot going on. Um, definitely tougher, 
my goal for you guys is to really understand this one um, and see why their blue angle and the green arc are related. All right. And I wanted to touch on number three in the homework. Uh, so basically, 51 degrees opens up to this arc. So the arc has to be double the angle. Okay, it seems pretty fair. Um, X is a central angle. And a central angle measure equals its arc measure. So what I'm telling you is that x is 102. So arcs and central angles are measured on the same scale. Okay, Inscribed angles are half. Okay, So we see that here. This is a great example. But I wanted to touch on this part because I don't know if I uh, directly said that.